Apple makes fantastic products and have proven themselves capable of designing market-leading quality-of-life devices. Moving on from being a company only known for its computers, we got the iPhone, which changed the way we communicate with each other, with the iPad closely following behind it. The Apple Watch has been around for five years now, and the next big thing is augmented reality tech. By the way, the Apple glasses are set to drop in 2021. But are Apple now setting their sights on the skies with the Apple Airplane? In a company that requires its employees to embrace and practice a culture of innovation and creativity, it would be fair to assume that Apple are looking to ambitiously branch off into the realm of aeronautical engineering. The short answer is, we wouldn't be at all surprised if they were. The long answer is that at this present time, there are no concrete plans from the bigwigs to make the Apple Airplane. There is plenty of conjecture based on rumor and hearsay, but until we see a prototype, the Apple Airplane is a maybe dream for a distant or not so distant future. That doesn't mean that Apple isn't trying their hand at the transportation industry though, it's just on a much smaller scale. The Apple Car It's no big secret, Apple have been working on their own iteration of an electric self-driven vehicle from as far back as 2014. Dubbed Project Titan, the team consisted of a thousand employees at a secret testing location near Apple's Cupertino headquarters. The concept was scrapped after just two years due to a change of direction. They laid off hundreds of employees to pursue development of an autonomous driving system which could be fitted to nearly any car in lieu of developing a vehicle themselves. Fast forward to 2018 and Apple rehired Tesla engineer Doug Field, leading to speculation that they had changed their mind and are again looking to compete in the flourishing electric sector of the automotive market. An old idea Apple executives were toying with the idea of developing their own car even before the original iPhone was launched. Steve Jobs met with the manufacturer of the V Vehicle, a prototype car that caught his eye. Within hours of receiving his email, the entrepreneurs had driven the concept car to Steve Jobs' house, where he proceeded to take it for a spin. The V Vehicle was an attempt at making a lightweight, low-cost, gasoline-powered car with substantially cheaper materials than conventional manufacture. The body was made from polypropylene and glass fiber, coming in 40% lighter than a steel-based car and costing 70% less to make. These unpainted body panels were mounted on a space frame body, a design generally reserved for the extremely high-end flagship supercars made by Audi and Ferrari. Jobs offered a brief critique and input on ways to improve the aesthetic design and overall consumer experience, but ultimately did not proceed with a collaboration, partnership or joint venture back in the game. Lately, there have been sources cited as anonymous Apple employees, stating that the Apple car project was once again up and running. It's been described as being able to give Tesla a run for its money, and reportedly, ex-Tesla employees are jumping ship to work on a project too exciting to pass up. Fuel has been added to the fire by Apple as they hired former Mercedes-Benz head of research and development, Johan Jungwirth, as a consultant for an unspecified project. It's rumored now that the new team are working on a range of technologies, including silent operation automatically opening doors, augmented reality windscreen displays, which will replace a steering wheel and foot pedals, and also an improved LiDAR sensor array. Currently, the LiDAR technology is used in Apple's iPhones, working in the same way a sonar does for a bat, only instead of sound, light reflection is measured in the order of nanoseconds in order to make a 3D scan of the surrounding environment. This creates depth mapping points, with the raw data run through built-in AR kit framework algorithms in the phone to both create brilliant looking photos, but also to generate augmented reality, where graphics can both pass in front of real world objects, as well as behind and through them. The LiDAR technology in the Apple car is rumored to be incorporated in the body panels, as well as the wheels, to map surroundings in real time for the autonomous driving system to react to the ever-changing driving conditions. Another step forward. Apple have now been granted a permit from the DMV to test self-driving vehicle technology on public roads in California. Their proprietary radar and LiDAR sensor equipment has been seen on a Lexus SUV cruising around the suburbs. In 2019, more than 200 employees working on the autonomous driving system team were transferred to other projects, again pointing to Apple shifting their efforts into creating a car of their very own. They also purchased Drive.ai, 
a startup company that designed a self-driving shuttle bus service. They have invested a billion dollars into China's answer to Uber, ride-sharing company Didi Chuxing, which owns 80% of the market share. Uber themselves announced a merger with the company, giving Apple a treasure trove of vehicle data to help them develop their own autonomous car and fine-tune the self-driving algorithms. The Apple-branded car is set for launch in 2023 at the earliest and 2025 at the latest. They aim to bring the same innovation to the automotive industry that ultimately changed how we use mobile phones forever. Once the Apple car is released, logically it would stand to reason that the company would start work on the monumental task of breaking into the aircraft design and manufacture industry. By looking at the new concepts of established companies, we can get a glimpse of what features Apple may offer. Boeing isn't done yet. There has only ever been one hypersonic passenger jet, the Concorde. Huge fare prices and a catastrophic failure spelt the end of the iconic aircraft, but Boeing are cooking up a reboot of their own. The concept boasts a delta wing formation with dual rear fins, a streamlined fuselage and a sharp pointed nose, all designed to reduce the wind resistance and drag experienced while flying in excess of the speed of sound. It's proposed that the new design could travel up to the speed of Mach 5, making a trip across the Atlantic in a mere two hours and a journey across the Pacific in just three hours. Construction would heavily feature titanium, a metal used in the infamous SR-70 Blackbird reconnaissance jet. The metal dissipates heat well while keeping thermal expansion to a minimum. The propulsion system is also eerily similar to the 1960s top-of-the-line aircraft. Twin jet engines would share the same intake air inlet and get the plane past Mach 2 before air is diverted to the dual ramjet engines which push it to ever higher speeds. Boeing is collaborating with Northrop Grumman Innovation Systems, a company which specializes in contracting to the military and developing experimental aircraft. Boeing has said that we could realistically see a prototype by 2040 with the new hypersonic passenger jets in operation by 2050. Airbus is still a player. Rival company Airbus has different plans for their airplane of the future, favoring efficiency and a lessened environmental impact as opposed to raw speed and shortening time customers spend up in the air. The design looks like the love child of an A380 and the Voyager Space Shuttle and is totally unlike anything ever seen before. The conventional tube with wing-mounted engines is totally done away with, and what remains is a blended wing design that gives customers a substantially more spacious cabin and better overall experience. The propulsion system is completely revamped, relying on hydrogen as its primary fuel source, resulting in zero emission operation. The liquid hydrogen would be used as a fuel in much the same way as the rocket booster used to take astronauts up into space. It would be used to power modified modern turbine engines with oxygen in the air combining with the hydrogen to create thrust on ignition. In addition, hydrogen fuel cells would create electrical power to run all the onboard systems, as well as providing auxiliary power to the hybrid electric propulsion turbines. The dual fuel source would work in a synergistic system, using fuel readily made from splitting water molecules to create a super efficient green alternative to burning thousands of tons of aviation fuel every year 